I have been meaning to make a presentation uh, or a video on macro cells and small cells highlighting what actually are the differences uh, and what exactly are small cells and uh, hopefully uh, this presentation even though it's much longer than I anticipated uh, hopefully you would find this useful. In theory, uh, when you when people study uh, in their universities or in books, uh, the mobile towers they look something like this. So you have a, a tower at the center of the cell, and it's creating a a, a, a cell, a, a coverage area. And uh, this extends to like a, you know, uh, even though in theory, if it's a single cell, it's a circle, but when you have multiple cells the coverage areas are shown as uh, hexagons uh, but uh, this is just in theory in practice uh, it's much more complex so in practice most mobile towers uh, or, or the the big macro cells they are three sector uh, cells so you would have a, a tower as shown on the left and you would have three cells and uh, you know when you have multiple of these then you can think of it becoming something like hexagons uh, 3 is not a standard number it, well 3 is a standard number but it's not the only number in practice I have also seen uh, like a six sector uh, six sector cells uh, which is like in a very extreme case uh, because you would read need really really high capacity backhaul to actually provide uh, like coverage via six sectors because there are probably going to be a lot of users. So this is how the towers really look like. I'm sure you have seen a lot more variety than the ones I'm showing on this particular uh, slide or the ones you will see further on. Uh, but Along with, traditionally, along with the, the, the tower and the antennas uh, towers which you see, you have a cabin, right? Uh, and you also have, so along with cabin, you have housing which could be uh, generators, like, you know, if there are areas which has frequent power cuts uh, or you could have nowadays uh, solar cells, uh, you would have uh, cooling uh, in the cabin itself or you would have separate cooling uh, cooling cabinets to, that provide like cold air. Um, yeah, so you have a, quite a different set of uh, like, uh, you know, cabinets and infrastructure uh, along with the, the antenna site. These are just some more examples of like, uh, you know, uh, different uh, sites like, you know, whether it's a single operator or multi operator. Uh, so you have this more mask and the antennas on top of the mast, sometimes you can have uh, antennas, uh, mass and antennas on top of like uh, buildings. Uh, so you have lots of different combinations because uh, of the popularity of uh, the mobiles and the smartphones nowadays. Uh, you just need as much coverage and capacity as you can get. So to look at simply, um, you would have a, a, a mast with antennas on top of it, right? And traditionally, you would have a little cabinet on the side, uh, which contains uh, the base station. Now, when we talk about the base station, so basically, if we are just looking at the, this one side right now, so you would have for this one side, let's say if it's a three sector site, right? Because it's showing three different antennas. Uh, you would have the baseband unit, right plus the radio unit uh, now each of these so the baseband unit uh, can be common for all these three sectors but you would generally need uh, maybe a separate radio unit or you can also have a combined radio unit um, so the baseband unit is uh, what in theory if you see the layer one the layer two layer three that's part of the bbu and you would need the the radio unit would be the filters and the power amplifiers etc etc right and those things they need to be connected to the antenna via these RF cables 
nowadays uh, you have a slightly different approach so rather than having the traditional base station approach what you have is uh, you have the remote so the radio unit is taken out of the cabinet and it's connected on top of the mast right so and that's called as generally the remote radio unit rru or remote radio head rrh they are just different terms for the same thing and the rru contains the uh, the analog to digital converter digital to analog converter the rf equipment um, you would generally also have the filters the power amplifiers uh, and the base band unit is still down there now you can have a single base band unit for connect uh, for the multiple uh, remote radio units so what you're doing is like a, you know a single baseband unit uh, has to serve this multiple of this rrus the connection between the base station uh, uh, the bbu plus the rru a, is generally through a fiber so like earlier you had the rf cables but now it's through fiber and that interface uh, b basically the protocol is called cipri now cipri is actually uh, requires a is a very high uh, demanding uh, protocol so you need to have fiber for it to effectively work you know especially when you have the multiple rrus uh, carrying a lot of uh, data uh, you need something like a dark fiber connectivity between the bbu and uh, the remote radio unit So let's look. Uh, so we have seen macro cells. Let's look typically at a macro cell. So you know the typical power is uh, 20 to 40 watts. Now here I should actually mention this one thing, and this is going to be a recurring thing uh, between all the different kinds of uh, macros and small cells and everything which I say, which I show. So when we say the typical power, 20 to 40 watts. Let's say 40 watts. Uh, then this is. Uh, Per uh, per antenna, so you know when you have in LTE, you need to have a MIMO, so it would be 2 by 40 watts, right? If it's 3G, you don't need a MIMO, so it would be just 40 watts. So 40 watts generally is the uh, typical power. Uh, I would say more like a maximum power kind of thing. So you might have sites which have much higher power, but that's uh, because of multiple antennas, each of them. Uh, is doing a maximum of this 40 watts uh, the typical height again is uh, between 15 to 30 meters or 25 meters right the coverage area 25 to 40 kilometers and uh, each sector uh, you uh, the macro typically serves greater than 200 simultaneous users per sector per frequency uh, the location is uh, generally of course on the tower in urban and rural or uh, top of buildings in urban the backhaul could be sort of any kind of backhaul. So even though I've said fiber, uh, microwave, DSL, you can even have satellite uh, or any kind of mac, uh, backhaul uh, you can think of. And they are really, really expensive, really expensive. So I've just put mm, a lot of uh, dollar signs just to show they are really, really expensive. So when I was young, uh, when I was younger than what I am now, uh, I wanted to figure out how actually the macro cell works. So I thought, let's take a simple example of how uh, the macro cell, how would you connect different components and it can start a transmission. So you would put a RRU or RRH on the tower. Uh, you would put an antenna, right? You would connect it up. Then you have to put the BBU and optionally a router with, which is there with the BBU. Sometimes it's also referred to as the edge router uh, and there are some other terms, but we will just say a router, right? You connect the BBU to the RRU and then you connect it to the service provider data center. So I'm assuming in this data center, you have uh, the core network plus depends on what technology. So because if it's a, 3G or 2G, then you might also have the BSC or the RNC or some part of that in there, uh, plus the core network. Um, so, so yeah, once the connectivity is completed, um, then uh, the, this particular 
antenna can start transmission right you have the front hall which is as I said uses CIPRI and then you have a back hall now if you want to have another of this so you know this big tower is just transmitting on one side so you want to transmit on multiple side you put another RRU right another antenna uh, connect it up connect it up and then it can start transmission as well so this is typically how uh, you know the tower connectivity and everything works now one of the things which uh, um, which is happening uh, uh, which you might often see is instead of having uh, these cabinets next to the the towers or the antenna sites they are being actually uh, co-located together so multiple of these BBUs are put together in a single location and this is the concept of centralized RAN it's also known as the BBU hosteling uh, so this is a BBU hostel which has uh, multiple of these BBUs connected or uh, just co-located together uh, so so yeah centralized RAN people think it has its own advantages uh, because it can um, allow interference management and it can see like you know the different loading patterns everything m much better uh, the only little issue is that actually you need to run uh, dark fibers from for a long location so this BBU hostel may be in a centralized location and then these uh, fibers so the maximum distance for these fibers is also something around 12 kilometers I think to between 12 and 14 I can't remember uh, because of uh, some limitation of latency uh, but yeah so this is how uh, the centralized uh, RAN, CRAN architecture is and that CRAN architecture evolves further to the cloud RAN which is also called CRAN uh, just to confuse everyone uh, the cloud RAN architecture where instead of having the BBUs uh, you know in a central location because nowadays the BBUs are becoming more of a software uh, functions right so virtual functions so you can actually put them in some kind of a cloud so that you, you don't have to have a physical data center you can have a data center in the cloud right and even though I've shown the service provider data center separate here that can be part of the cloud too so you can actually split the core functions as well uh, some of them physically in the service provider data center some in the cloud so you can have the cloud run architecture another concept uh, which you will often come across is uh, one of uh, DAS or the distributed antenna system so traditionally the way DAS used to work was uh, you would have a macro cell right and the macro cell is actually transmitting but let's say the you cannot receive a good enough signal inside a building right because of the the building might have I don't know energy efficient uh, windows which stops uh, mobile signals penetrating or it could have like some there could be some people which are sitting on the other side so which doesn't have a direct visibility to macro so they might not get a good enough signal so what you would do is you would have an antenna on the top of a building and generally is referred to as uh, the donor antenna and from that donor antenna what you do is you would run a cable inside the building and in on the cables uh, through the cables you would actually connect uh, indoor antennas you might also have a an amplifier as it's shown here the bi-directional amplifier but uh, you would generally have the antennas and these antennas because you are distributing uh, these antennas so this is called the distributed antenna system and this is generally very very expensive so all effectively it's doing is is boosting the signal uh, from outside to inside okay now this approach has changed uh, over time so that's not so you can still do the same old way uh, that's the same old way but in the new approach what you generally have are in the new buildings you have an equipment room at the bottom uh, where you would have uh, some kind of like a the RAN equipment uh, like you know you might have uh, let's say uh, a, a BBU uh, 
right and a bbu and a rru uh, but instead of uh, having an antenna on the top of tower what you would do is you would feed the signal the rf signal or uh, like you know or you would say uh, feed the bbu signal through a fiber optic cable uh, throughout the building and there would be remote units everywhere and these remote units uh, would have antennas so or you could have a remote unit at a single location and then multiple antennas connected through the through the coax cable uh, and that way uh, you actually are going to provide the capacity just for the building in the first case you are uh, the das solution is taking the capacity from the macro cell so the number of users the macro can actually so will get reduced whereas in the second case uh, the building would have its own capacity right so it doesn't affect the capacity of the macro outside there is also this concept of a, a mini macro um, floating around and you know uh, some people you would often see discussions that hey is mini macro a small cell or is it like a macro cell kind of thing so um, we will maybe talk about that later whether a mini macro is a small cell or not but what exactly is a mini macro so a mini macro is the same as a macro with the following differences so it generally has a single sector even though there could be two sectors uh, it would generally have single frequency so single frequency per technology um, so you know if you have 3g and 4g there would be one frequency for 3g one for 4g right it could be single rat or multi rat but i think nowadays they are generally multi rat um, antenna height well it's less than a macro uh, 8 to 10 meters backhaul um, it could have any kind of a backhaul uh, you know microwave mesh fiber dsl but it would generally have lower bandwidth than a macro cell and again all this above uh, uh, the above mentioned things are just for general guidance now deployments can vary and you could still keep on referring to many things as a mini macro it's not a standard term so this is a picture uh, from airspan uh, and sprint um, but here you have all these different kind of uh, like a small cells and a macro and a mini macro Right, so you can see on the left hand side, top left hand side, how the mini macro looks like. Um, yeah, so you have mini macro, air pole, strand mount, etc, etc. On the right, you have a, a, a picture of a Vodafone mini macro mast uh, with all the gear in the base. Um, so this is just something which I um, picked up from... Um, from Twitter this is another example of uh, you what you can say is a mini macro but can also be referred to as a small cell um, and what it is is something similar to the pictures uh, I showed uh, in the previous uh, slide uh, where you have all the equipment in the cabinet at the bottom and you have cables which are, uh, are running all the way uh, to the antenna on the top and you would generally have multiple antennas so even though physically it looks like one antenna but inside there is a bundle which contains the access and the mesh antennas uh, so so yes you can say this is also another example of a, a mini macro right so small cells why do we really really need small cells so as i alluded to earlier um, a lot of um, sites a lot of new buildings they are being uh, designed for energy efficiency now when they are designed for energy efficiency what it means is the mobile signals can't really penetrate in so if you want to provide coverage in these buildings you either use a dash system or you use a, a, a small cell solution. You also have these old uh, buildings built of stones 
uh, again they have similar problem because the walls are so thick uh, the signals do not penetrate in unless the mobile uh, you know the the tower is close close to these kind of uh, buildings so you can have small cells outside providing outside in coverage right rather than having a small cell inside the house providing inside out coverage you have case of uh, shopping malls uh, where you need to provide uh, capacity because there are it may have perfect coverage but there are so many users uh, at this particular location that uh, the, uh, just one uh, macro cell may not be able to serve all the users so you can have a small cell inside the shopping mall to provide um, capacity and it could be for coverage as well and you have the dense urban areas like a, a you know a manhattan or something where there are so many users you need to have loads of small cells to provide coverage uh, to provide capacity for all these users you could have uh, rural areas where there are very few people who are li living in these rural areas and they may be far away from the macro site or they may be in the shade of a hill or they may be in some kind of a dip uh, so because of that they do not get enough uh, macro coverage or they do get no signal uh, these people uh, could be served using small cells you could have uh, things like uh, like you know when we talk about a remote connectivity so you could have remote areas like a oil rig where which is probably so far out on the shore it does not get coverage from a macro cell which may be on the shore right or near the coast so th these kind of areas uh, could do with some kind of a uh, some a small cell just to provide coverage to the people and the things uh, in in this particular oil rig then you have case of uh, us wanting connectivity while on the plane you could have small cells on the plane and you could have small cells on the ship uh, you know to provide coverage mainly uh, so you know for anyone interested of course right now uh, the prices for these are quite high if you actually use a small cell uh, on a plane or on a ship but uh, i'm sure the cost will come down so i was looking for a definition of small cell and uh, you know i have my own definition of small cell which i'll come to uh, shortly but what exactly are small cells so this is from a blog on comscope and what it says is uh, small cells or small cellular base stations encompass a number of different technologies but one could describe them as anything that's not typical macro site so that's not typical macro site they are deployed to solve uh, network capacity issues in a relatively small area like a hotspot or an important zone that is a subset of the umbrella macro site coverage so maybe i do not completely agree but it's a it's a good definition i was listening to a webinar from uh, igr uh, from, uh, given by yan gillet and what he said is like a uh, from our world everything is a small cell if it's not nailed to a tower so his definition is everything is a small cell if it's not nailed to a tower so it could be wi-fi indoor outdoor dash femto cells metro cells rrh micro cell signal boosters as well so here again um, it's a good definition but i may not agree to it completely so small cell forum uh, is uh, like the defining organization for what small cells are or for getting small cells uh, popularized the way they are now and also organizing all the different small cell vendors and the interested parties together together in an umbrella forum so their definition of small cell is small cell is an umbrella term uh, 
for operator controlled low powered radio access nodes including those that operate in licensed and unlicensed carrier grade uh, Wi-Fi. Small cells typically have a range of 10 meters to several hundred meters. So I should actually quickly say that I probably don't agree 100% with this definition but we will come to that. So the types of small cells include femtocells, picocells and microcells broadly increasing in size from femtocells the smallest to microcells the largest. Any or all of these small cells can be based on femtocell technology. Now I believe that actually I actually believe in these things that you could have small cells which are like macro cells but they could be based on femtocell technology. And what is this femtocell technology? The collection of standards, software, open interfaces, chips and know-how that have powered the growth of femtocells. So, so yes, so I could not find a definition according to what I would like to think is a small cell, uh, but I have shown you like uh, the different um, definitions and we will look at what I think is a small cell. So a small cell has to have a small form factor. That's very important according to me. And it should be a complete base station. So when I say complete base station, it must contain BBU and radio unit uh, and optionally a router. So again, I, I'm just taking a break to show that not everyone agrees with my definition or uh, people of course shouldn't agree with what I say, but I'm just clarifying what my understanding of small cell is. So this is an example of uh, Ericsson's uh, radio dot small cell and they call it a small cell. But if you look at this picture carefully, uh, so what they have is they have the digital unit, which is the uh, pooled baseband uh, unit. Then they have the indoor RRU and the radio dot actually is something which is uh, connects to the indoor uh, radio unit. So it's more like a partial remote radio head. So because part of the functionality is in the indoor uh, radio unit. So this is their definition of small cell, which is, uh, you know, which you can see probably doesn't agree with my definition. This is an example of a Huawei's lamp site, and it's in a way similar to the Ericsson dot. Uh, and it has uh, this uh, the on the top it has this PRRU which is the Pico remote radio unit right which is connected via Ethernet cable to the R hub which is RRU hub right so similar functionality to the the Ericsson dot and then uh, the R hub is connected via fiber to the uh, baseband unit the BBU right again this is a this is what the Huawei's definition of small cell is and it doesn't agree uh, with what I'm saying, but I just want to point this out uh, up front. So going back to my definition, uh, the third point which I say is uh, it should have low power consumption, but not necessarily low power output. It can use licensed or unlicensed spectrum, but it does not include non-cellular technologies like Wi-Fi, etc. Unless they are used in conjunction with cellular technologies. So for a small cell, if I put it simply, it has to have it. The device should use a SIM. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a physical SIM or, a, you know, virtual SIM or whatever, but it has it's a SIM based technology. So if unless it has that, it's not really uh, a small cell in my definition. So I would also rule out uh, things like uh, the RF booster, even though you can say like, well, they, they, they use SIM, you know, even when you have an RF booster, your handset or your UE has to use, have a SIM, right, to work. But, uh, but yeah, um, I don't agree to that. It could be indoor or outdoor. And it could be deployed for variety of reasons, including coverage, capacity, 
densification, high throughput, improved signal quality, improved user experience uh, to provide value added services for smart applications, for proximity marketing or anything else. So what are the characteristics of small cells? Uh, they should be easy and straightforward to deploy. So if it's a femtocell, whether it's a residential or enterprise, I know I'm going to come to what exactly they are, but if it's a femtocell, then they should be deployed by the end users themselves. And if it's like other kind of small cells, which we will see, uh, they should be easily deployed by low skilled installers. It should have self-organizing uh, network capability, sound capability, right? It could be any kind of sound capability, but it should be able to do self-configuration and it should hopefully be able to do self-optimization and interference management, especially because small cells could be deployed uh, in an ad hoc manner. It should be synchronized to the macro network, especially important for urban and dense deployments. Uh, for rural, it may not really be that important. And it should be flexible on backhaul capability. So what are the types of small cells? So uh, before the term small cells became popular, the term femtocells was popular, right? Because initially it all started with femtocells, even though Thinking about it, there were other kind of small cells uh, around for a while, for a long time, uh, but it all started with femtocells. So femtocells could be residential and enterprise. Then you have pico cells, which is also sometimes referred to as indoor metro cells. You have micro cells, and sometimes micro cells are referred to as metro cells or outdoor metro cells. And uh, then there is meadow cells. So even though I mentioned meadow cells, you will hardly find a mention of that. Uh, most of the time they are referred to as rural small cells. And this is a nice picture from Qualcomm, um, which shows all these uh, different kinds of uh, uh, small cells. So let's first start with Wi-Fi, uh, you know, because people often ask like, hey, how does this compare to Wi-Fi? So, you know, when you talk about femtocells, so how does it compare to Wi-Fi? So a Wi-Fi access point typically has uh, 200 milliwatts. Typical power is 200 milliwatts or even less. Uh, is generally deployed indoors. Uh, the coverage area um, is roughly around 100 meters. Uh, but, you know, 100 meters is more like a radius, I would say. Uh, and typically a Wi-Fi access point can uh, so 250 users uh, simultaneously um, of course it can be indoors or outdoors and the backhaul generally is wired you know so whether it is DSL ADSL fiber and I would say I've just put a dollar for a sign for a cost right because it's cheap compared to a macro cell it's like far far cheap Then you have femtocells and as I said, they could be residential or enterprise. Um, typical power is around 100 milliwatts. Uh, again, you remember I said if it's like LTE and it has MIMO, so it would be more like 2 by 100 milliwatts uh, or maybe 2 by 50 milliwatts. It depends. Um, its coverage area is typically around 50 meters and generally uh, residential serve around 8 users and enterprise around 16 users um, simultaneously. Um, they are generally indoors. Femtocells are generally always indoors uh, and backhaul is wired. The cost, well, it's slightly more expensive than Wi-Fi access points, uh, but not too expensive. Then you have PicoCell, which as I mentioned are also referred to as indoor metro cells. Uh, typical power 250 milliwatts um, and they cover typically around 250 meters. Um, the typical number of simultaneous users are between 32 and 64 
32 is very common but the new ones uh, which I've seen can serve 64 uh, and of course they are as generally indoors and they also have a wired backhaul and they are slightly more expensive than um, uh, a, a fem to sell whether it's residential or enterprise then you have micro cells and as I said they are also referred to as outdoor metro cells typically between 2 to 5 watts and sometimes I've even seen 1 watt uh, 1 watt cells are being referred to as uh, micro cells uh, they are outdoors and they are typically deployed around 8 to 10 meters height and they can roughly cover between 500 meters to 3 kilometers uh, typically so number of users between 32 and 200 but I would say 200 is more like a, like a, like a, you know a, you don't generally get 200 uh, users because even though it's designed to cover quite a large area uh, but 200 users is a bit ambitious uh, so maybe 128 would be maximum uh, again less than that typically it is uh, deployed in small towers, buildings, lamp posts. When it's deployed on a lamp post, uh, it would be deployed probably at a much lower power because it depends on how far it wants to cover and what kind of antenna is used. And it can have variety of backhauls, uh, you know, because typically it says fiber or microwave uh, or mesh, uh, but it may not be possible. So fiber would be ideally suited but you can't always have fiber connectivity to all your uh, micro cells. Uh, uh, it would maybe more of a microwave or a mesh uh, mesh backhaul. Um, and it's uh, it costs uh, a bit more than a Pico cell. Quite, uh, quite, uh, quite a bit more uh, than a Pico cell. Now, if you look at this uh, micro cells definition, you would basically see that Typically, uh, it's not very different to a mini macro. So even though mini macro is a much higher power, right? But it all depends on whether, where you deploy that particular mini macro. If you're deploying it in a city or in an urban area, then you would put it at a lower power and then it could be a micro cell rather than a mini macro. Then there are rural small cells or meadow cells as some of them refer to um, again uh, this is more for coverage uh, rather than capacity so it could be a much higher power between 5 and 40 watts right in a, it's deployed on a some kind of a, like a like a little tower or post but it's deployed at a much or, a, or the mast is quite high so between 5 and 15 meters and coverage area could be between 1 to 10 kilometers. The number of simultaneous users uh, may be a bit higher. So 32 to 64 is just a typical number, but it could be higher uh, number of users depending on what's the purpose, right? Uh, the location, tower, buildings, rooftop. Uh, some of these rural small cells uh, actually use the satellite backhaul. So you would find the, these satellite backhaul rural cells are mainly 3G rather than 4G. But there is, uh, you can still have 4G. There are techniques to actually make 4G work with this satellite backhaul. You could also have some kind of a mesh backhaul or a microwave backhaul or LT backhaul as possible as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's typically cost similar to what a micro cell would cost or maybe slightly more depending on what's the power output etc but again you know you could uh, you could see that um, this can also fit uh, when we talk about mini macro so if a mini macro was deployed uh, in a rural area it would typically be similar to a rural small cell so when some people discuss that hey is mini macro a small cell or is it a macro and i think it's like its definition is not clear cut it's fuzzy, depending on the use case and deployment model and etc. etc.
so this is just a picture which shows like a, you know a different kind of a small cells um, you know what how, what they cover and how many users they have etc so kind of question people always ask is like hey what's the size of a cell so if we are looking at any kind of a small cell at whatever power and the question is like okay so what would be the coverage area so that's not a very simple thing to answer because the size of a cell or a coverage area depends on a lot of different factors so it depends first of all on the antenna mast and mast height and tilt right it depends on frequency because the higher the frequency the smaller the cell size it would depend on the power so you know you might have a small a small cell with a very little output power on top of a, a, a antenna like a, on you have another small cell which is much higher power on top of the same uh, like you know mast their cell sizes would be different and it also depends on the the topography of a region like you know what, what is the vegetation like you know whether there are hills there is a lot of greenery etc etc so this is not something uh, like you know when you ask someone like what's the coverage area of this cell it's not something easily answered this is just to recap uh, you know when we talk about frequency and i mentioned in the previous uh, slide it's like what frequency should you select whether you should select high frequency or low frequency well it depends what you are trying to do because higher frequency means faster decay so if you are trying to do coverage of an area you need lower frequency right but lower frequency uh, means uh, there are more users in a cell so each one will get less uh, throughput so if you have higher frequency it's a smaller cell size but it means uh, more throughput but the higher frequency has a problem that it cannot penetrate uh, walls and uh, things like that so the lower frequency helps in penetration uh, so even though you might have like a suburban area but you have houses built from with thick walls uh, they might not get coverage even though there may be a macro nearby uh, you know so it's it's frequency selection is again uh, a, a complex uh, discussion area um, i have a video on spectrum you may want to just have a look at uh, that particular video so we have seen different use cases of uh, small cells um, in in case in sense in a fixed sense uh, on different uh, deployments uh, and different types of small cells but because small cells are small form factors a uh, lot of operators are coming up with some interesting unique uh, use cases to actually use uh, small cells for uh, many different reasons and one of these examples uh, we will actually see some examples now but one of these examples is the telefonica's lt nano so here the small cell uh, which they said is like a really small cell uh, something like 40 grams or something and that can go <coughs> on um, a drone and you have network in a box which can actually go in a backpack and it's a, they said that it's like something like around 3 kilograms and it could be used for uh, monitoring or supervision or it can also provide a remote uh, coverage for a group of people uh, so 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 yeah this is a very interesting use case which could be used maybe for a rescue and emergency um uh, purposes sprint is doing something similar with the uh, the magic box on a drone so magic box is their uh repeater or uh, is their relay which is actually made by airspan and this is a smaller version of that uh, magic box on the drone and they are also using it for uh, emergency and rescue scenarios something similar from AT&T uh, uh, so 
this is a flying cow a cow is a, a cell on wheels so AT&T when there are these uh, Super Bowls and uh, high capacity events they actually take their uh, cows uh, to this different uh, uh, like uh, you know con uh, emergency concerts and well not emergency the concerts and things like that uh, so they are using the same concept the concept of cow uh, but uh, a flying cow so it would be on a helicopter and of course it would be tethered so you know so the power could it could always have power otherwise the drones will run out or these helicopters will run out of power very quickly so so yeah it's uh, they are saying that uh, each of these uh, can have uh, four radios per helicopter and they can have this uh, 4000 connected users per radio so this is a very interesting concept uh, it would uh, be really good to see this uh, concept uh, in practice so this is a lamp post uh, and this lamp post is actually hiding a small cell uh, and which is uh, deployed by KDDI so the top of the lamp post is actually an antenna and there is a small cell there uh, and again it's just to provide coverage to a remote beauty spot without without spoiling the the scenery so it's uh, just blended in into a lamp post uh, so you know it won't be noticeable uh, when people take pictures and things like that that there is a like a mobile tower or something um, that's uh, me on the left hand side uh, just showing example of uh, the Ericsson's uh, and Philips small cells in the lamp post so Ericsson has been working with Philips for quite a while uh, showing all this uh, how you can actually put small cells in a lamp post in such a way that actually um, it's uh, it provides coverage in an area and it's not obviously visible that uh, there is a small cell or there is some kind of like a, you know this is a coverage tower or something like that And that's again me on the left hand side. This is with uh, the Helikite, which is uh, stands for helium plus kite uh, concept, and uh, which is being used by EE and BT for providing uh, coverage during emergency and disaster recovery scenarios. So in this case, there is actually a small cell um, at on the tail of this uh, Helikite, the you know the one which is at the the bottom and uh, it has antennas and everything uh, so it can actually go let's say if it goes up to around 100 feet high then it can provide a coverage to around um, uh, something like a five six kilometer radius uh, with a two by five watt uh, 4g lt unit uh, but again as i said this is just like rough figure uh, but yeah this could be used uh, to pro to provide coverage uh, like you know in case of there is some floods or something or some place where the existing uh, macro site has been knocked out so this could be temporarily used to provide coverage and this is similar to the AT&T uh, helicopter uh, which I showed earlier so this is tethered so the power is actually being supplied from the ground this way this helicat can actually stay up for uh, let's say around three weeks at a time um, without any issues right and hopefully the macro issues would be sorted out in the meantime so one other question which often keeps coming up uh, with regards to repeaters versus relays versus small cells like you know what's the difference between them so this is just my attempt to actually show the difference between repeaters versus relays versus small cells uh, may not be entirely accurate so repeaters uh, which uh, are also known as layer one relay or signal boosters they receive a signal they amplify and they retransmit uh, so from a ue point of view is basically rather than uh, seeing a signal from a macro which may be very weak in an area it, it would probably see the signal from a repeater and think this signal is from a macro uh, 
So it's generally the same frequency, uh, even though in theory it could be a different frequency. Uh, the, but the problem with this is, so it amplifies the signal as well as the noise. Uh, this is the biggest problem with that because it cannot differentiate between the signal and the noise. Uh, again, it's very simple, it's inexpensive, um, you know, very little extra latency introduced uh, and there are no changes needed to any base station or anything. Then you have a relay, which is, so in relays you have the layer 2 relay, which is uh, like, you know, the at the MAC layer, uh, well, layer 2 uh, level, but you also have a layer 3 relay. But I haven't really seen a layer 3 relay in practice, or maybe I just don't know about it. So most of the relays which you see are generally layer 2 relays. And what they do is um, they receive, they demodulate and decode the signal, and uh, they encode and modulate it back, uh, amplifying it uh, before transmitting. So this way, the noise is not amplified. It's only the signal that is amplified. Uh, so the, the noise is not amplified. Um, but of course, uh, what this would do is this would introduce uh, a bit of a additional latency. Um, and this is slightly more complex than the simple uh, booster. Uh, there may be a need for uh, new radio functions between the relay and the base station. Depends on uh, how the implementation is done. And the transmission, it could be the same frequency or different frequency. So if it's a different frequency, then there is no need to worry about interference management and things like that. But if it's the same frequency, then it has to be, uh, you know, so you have to be careful because what happens is because of that extra latency, uh, which has now been introduced in uh, decoding and demodulating, etc., etc., and modulating it back, it this signal appears as like uh, coming from a multipath, but now that uh, the the latency introduces like a you know it it just may actually interfere with the signal in the next frame or different frame from the macro so this you have to be careful how uh, this relay is actually introduced and then you have small cells so small cells and i've just shown an example of a small cell with lt backhaul here but small cell is a complete base station with its own cell identity. Now, if it's a signal booster, right, uh, like a repeater, or if it's a relay, that it does not have its own cell identity. It's actually using the cell identity of the macro, right? So it's also using the capacity from the macro. Now, when I talk about with LT backhaul in case of small cells, it's still using the capacity from the macro but it's got its own identity, right? Again, the transmission could be in the same frequency or in another frequency. If it's the same frequency, then interference mitigation is uh, very important. Now, this uh, the advantage of small cell with LT backhaul in this case uh, is like it's comparatively simpler, not as simple as a repeater, but it could be simpler than the relay, right? the noise is eliminated and there are no changes uh, required in the base station. But this is probably because it's a complete base station a unit. It's uh, more expensive than repeater or uh, the relay. And it's got higher latency because uh, the LT backhaul is basically uh, going to be like, a, you know, so you can think of it like the small cell signals are going on top of the existing uh, LT signal. So it's a two layers, uh, two layers. So th there would be additional latency which is introduced here. So finally, uh, in case if you haven't seen, uh, there are other videos, uh, one dealing with all this uh, frequency band and spectrum. Uh, if you have not seen that, uh, please have a look. And then there is also a detailed uh, presentation on the different types of backhaul where I look at all the types of backhaul which are used for macro cells as well as small cells which you may find interesting too.
so uh, this uh, I always wanted to do this uh, particular video on uh, macro cells and small cells and macro cells versus small cells so hopefully you liked it uh, please let me know let me have your comments like whether you like it or you know what things have I missed or if you s disagree with uh, certain things uh, just uh, leave your comments so I would know about it uh, thank you